Hello and welcome back to the Jewels with Jim podcast. I am your host, Gigi, and I hope you're well. If you're new, welcome. I'm so honored to have you here. And if you're returning, I'm humbled to have you back. And to all my new subbies, welcome, welcome, welcome. You guys are the VIPs indeed. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the support. I hope you and I can share and learn on this journey as it is not a destination. So I'm continuing talking about the planets individually because as I always say, I feel a lot of the time the definitions that we are given are surface level. For example, you're told the sun represents individuality and creativity. However, most of the time we don't even know what that means or at least I found the definitions like that to be very confusing as there are 12 astrological signs and creativity and individuality would be expressed differently in each of the signs and now that we understand the signs energies we can now move on to understanding the planets so there are essentially 10 planets being the sun the moon mercury venus mars jupiter neptune uranus pluto and last but not least saturn So in your birth chart, there are 12 houses. Well, in any chart, really, there are 12 houses. So naturally, there will be houses in your chart that don't have any planets or that astrologers seem to deem empty or are considered empty. So it's not that the houses themselves are empty and just kind of like null and void. It just means that the energy of of those houses are not really important to your current life path. They're not really of focus as compared to where your planets currently lie. So wherever your planets currently lie, that is where you need to be. That is where your focus needs to be if that makes sense so there are 12 uh, astrological signs and there are 12 houses so all of your houses will have energies towards them but like i said not every house is going to have a planet in it so today i will be talking about uranus uranus however you fancy spelling it uranus uranus that is what i'll be talking about today or rather in this episode um and i think almost everyone who's into astrology kind of knows uranus or aquarius energy is just that every it's just that energy that everybody just loves or you probably just you know love to hate it because it's so genuine it's so authentic it's so everything right I mean, I certainly get excited when I talk about Uranus because not only do I have Uranus in my ninth house and it makes a contraction to my sun, which makes me very creative and somebody who's just like always getting like amazing and creative ideas and, you know, my even my self-expression is quite unique. However, I feel it has influenced, you know, the lives we currently live, especially when it comes to technology and, you know, new age media However, I will be talking about that a bit later in this video. So the basics about Uranus within the solar system are that it is the seventh planet from the sun, number one. Um, It was the first planet to be discovered through the aid of a telescope, which I don't even find surprising because Uranus, you know, rules technology. So there you have it. What a coincidence. I think not. And also it is... um, it is also much larger than earth which was quite surprising for me because i was like okay it's much larger than earth that means yay there's a potential planet out there that we could potentially live on maybe but um (laughs) um it's it's literally made out of hot and dense fluid which is almost like not even almost like but it is made up of water methane 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 i don't know if i pronounced that correctly but uh, yeah you know what i mean and ammonia so it's the methane or the methane that actually gives uranus that like bluish turquoisey color and unfortunately it cannot support life as we know it and unlike neptune which has eight moons it has about 27 moons and again i still ask myself do all 27 moons go through like the same phases so for example if one moon is a full moon are they all full moons or will one have like a a new moon and then the other maybe a crescent moon and then the other maybe a half moon and then the other a full full moon and also i'm asking myself can you see them in the sky like at the same time at the same time that you would see, you know, um, the sun and the moon, 
like is it is it that type of vibe i honestly wonder what is going on up there but at this stage i'm pretty convinced that i won't find out in this lifetime or maybe i will if the ets maybe visit me and you know share all of the the secrets of um the universe that will actually be awesome but anyway i digress um if it were possible to live on uranus our days would probably last about 17 hours and i think a couple of minutes as opposed to the 24 hours that we currently have on earth and i think the best thing and the most amazing thing about uranus is that it actually orbits around the sun on its sides and it has about 13 rings around it there just obviously had to be something special about uranus right like obviously <laughs> uh, because its natural energy anyway is unique and so diverse and so authentic so they had to be something special about uranus now in my mind i'm already thinking okay if it's orbiting sideways like my visuals right now are so conflicted like i'm so confused like how does that even look like of course i know okay it will be on its sides and it will look much differently to all of the other planets which are kind of you know um which kind of orbit the sun differently but i still wonder how it actually looks like if i were to actually see it through a telescope like that would be so amazing actually i'm going to put that on my bucket list it's definitely one of the things that i need to do to see planets for myself through a horoscope yep you guessed it i'm definitely adding it onto my bucket list so it has about 13 rings around it and um this is just a description of uranus um and that should already kind of give you an idea of the influence that that uranus kind of brings into astrology and into one's chart so uranus rules over aquarius along with saturn so you will definitely hear me making reference to saturn as well aquarians are undoubtedly the humanitarians of the zodiac of the zodiac but they're also able to kind of remain closed off ish or i would say they also find it quite easy to kind of detach and plug out when necessary it's as though they've mastered the art of being caring and being compassionate but also not getting too attached and um not allowing people around them and also actually allowing people around them to be themselves freely and i'm just saying uranian types or even aquarius can be closed off because i found it to be true i mean a simple analogy of um an article i did when i was describing the benefits of technology i acknowledge the fact that it has made life easier or so we think i think maybe we've become a bit complacent but anyway i digress um so it's made it much easier to engage with others to keep in touch when people are in different parts of the world however i think there is a downside to that in that yes the world has become a global village and we no longer blame the postman or wait on him to hand deliver letters but you know now thanks to innovation and technology and all these devices ranging from mobile phones to laptops to tablets which enable us to reach people around the globe as i've mentioned before okay that is pretty revolutionary actually that's pretty radical like if you ask me that's pretty awesome but also simultaneously it has created division and an almost separation amongst people and um we now hide behind screens filters and apps instead of really just experiencing life as we know it like in the moment and you know um instead of us bringing instead of bringing us closer to the ones that are near us it has kind of created some sort of division because now more than anything we're more interested in what our phones have to offer we're more interested in the who's who in the zoo we're more interested in what people are doing we're more interested in funny videos we're just more interested in the technological space in the innovation space in the in the social media space than we are about natural media you know the everyday media that happens um from day to day from hour to hour really so now we're currently on our phones and really there's just nothing more important than our phones because that's what we currently rely on which brings me to noting um the other day i think it was last week sometime when the internet like shut off and i say the internet 
because technically we all spend so much of our time on social media i know i think it was um the main social media apps except for twitter and of course google you know the search in engine google was was live so there were no problems there there were no problems with twitter and there also were no problems with tiktok however facebook instagram and um i'm actually forgetting the third app whatsapp actually instagram whatsapp and facebook were down and a lot of people were you know upset and just up in arms about the fact that oh my gosh social media has come to a halt what am i going to do because let's face it a lot of people are doing um and you know making a living off of social media so i can imagine that it would have been a bit of a nightmare to not have social interaction for five hours or not having a means to actually make money for five hours like that is a lot of time for a lot of people because time is money you know and money is time money obviously needs time we need to make time to make money um so you know we do see the amazing hand that uranus has had in terms of tech and, and even gadgets however on the other side of that coin we can also see how it has formed a sort of division it's now android versus you know um ios users so apple users i didn't want to say apple because you know i might be but anyway i digress the thing that i'm trying to say here is that we can clearly see the difference and you know it is creating a lot of mental stress a lot of emotional stress and i think a lot of people are going through the motions when it comes to social media because let's face it a lot of people are living lives on social media that are not really real so i think we need to have the discernment to you know tell the difference between all of that so in astrology it rules the 11th house and i also just realized as i'm visualizing going through the houses in my head that in the solar system saturn and neptune are actually neighbors to uranus and that capricorn which is ruled by saturn and pisces which is ruled by neptune are so close to each other in terms of um you know the astrological dates so cap season is in december so that's from um december to january and then aquarius which is ruled by uranus is between jan and february and then we have neptune which is around late february and early march and then we start with the spring equinox in aries from march to mid april which is actually the new year or allegedly the new year because i mean honestly to be to be quite honest i think um a lot of us can have versions of what we think reality is but a lot of the times we really don't know for sure until we experience until all of us as a collective actually experience something simultaneously i don't know like a big bang or something then that's the only time we can actually tell that oh my god actually everything is a lie and this is the actual truth until we get to that point and until we can actually experience something together everything is kind of like a conspiracy theory and we should take everything with a grain of salt and you know kind of live our lives the best way we see fit which is the most important thing so i digress from that topic maybe i'll discuss that in other videos um the 11th house in our chart um it's a house of friendships it's a house of dreams it's the house of our goals that we wish to accomplish um the house of wishes and also our objectives that we would like to carry out in this lifetime it's about collaboration as well and also gains from um social from social connections social networks or even networking in general um i have pisces in the 11th house so my friends will probably be people that are very down to earth very humble um from different walks of life probably they may be actors they may be entertainers because as we know neptune rules all of these aspects of life they it rules glamour so i may have friends that you know are glamorous or that really like to doll themselves up and to and sort of create a different illusion to reality um i actually can i actually can say that i do have a couple of friends that you know don't really live in reality in the grand scheme of things i think it's just that it's not even that they don't live in reality i just think that they live in a different reality which i have yet to experience and for them 
for neptunians it's very like i said in my neptune video and if you haven't watched that do check that out to understand what it is that i'm trying to say here they don't really know how to articulate some of the things or most of the things that they do experience but most of the things are genuinely felt genuinely experienced and it's just a shame that we that we as humans are currently experiencing the universe or at least in my humble opinion we are experiencing the experiencing the universe in a very materialistic way and a lot of a lot of the things that we should be doing spiritually or even for our own human evolution are just yeah not as realistic or not are not understood i mean i feel like if you haven't if you don't have neptunian energy then it's really difficult for you to understand what it is that i'm saying but again i digress so um the 11th house shows us um the way in which we make friends or even the kind of friends we attract like i said um i do have a lot of acquaintances that are um in the in the public eye that may be considered really famous um, I have friends that are actors, musicians, um, that are poets, that are film directors, um, that are fashion designers. So, you know, it's, it's, it's those kind of friends that I actually um, attract. And, um, you know, wherever Uranus energy is, is where you should be experiencing your true self. I mean it can only be denied for so long right wherever wherever uranus lands in your chart is where you need to be expressive you need to be original you need to be authentic offbeat and display your independence so i have my uranus in the ninth house and of course i am talking about things that are completely unorthodox i even talk about topics that really people don't want to talk about people really are shocked sometimes by the things that I say, um, by my belief systems, and um, just just the way that I in the way that I perceive society, the way that I perceive philosophy, the way that I perceive religion, spirituality. Um, I think a lot of people do kind of raise their brows when I say things because it's like, do you really, really, really? you really believe that <laughs> you know i think i do get a lot of that from people um that just don't understand really what what it is that i'm trying to push here what it is what kind of movement i'm actually trying to project onto society or at least trying to teach um society because again the ninth house is about teaching as well it is about higher education it is about higher learning it is about elevating to the higher consciousness or at least seeing um the bigger picture the 360 the full circle it's about um being able to see a complete bird's eye view of life in general and then being able to synthesize that into your everyday life or at least share the same sentiments with other people who experience life in the same way enough about the ninth house i'll definitely get into the houses in future videos um i also wanted to mention that there's this term going around now in um most astrology groups especially on facebook um and that term is the unevolved and the evolved so i wanted to talk about this really quickly um apparently an evolved aquarius or evolved uranian energy brings the community together it increases um leadership abilities which i think is absolutely true i believe that a true leader is just somebody who motivates the team just to do better it's the it's the person who motivates the team to ask questions it's the person who motivates the team to become more creative to become more innovative to really think out of the box i mean really which box you know it's that kind of energy where it's like life is limitless the universe is limitless you can manifest literally anything that you want and bringing that into a team and having the team believe that and actually walk in that path is definitely something that uranian energy is capable of um i think for the most part uranian types just really want people to win and want them to be their best selves Hence, I think that they share a lot of their knowledge to anyone who's willing to listen. And like I said, they have an ability to bring people together, even, like through their natural, um, they just have like, when I think about Aquarians, I just think about this really like 
magnetic type of personality where if you do engage in a in a conversation with Aquarian people you'll realize that they're so intelligent they receive really amazing shocking aha moments even when they speak to you they make sense of the world around them in a way that benefits benefits humanity that is the evolved energy at least that i've seen um you know these are the people that want to evolve spiritually physically emotionally socially monetarily and you know even in their careers they want to be innovative they want to do things differently they want to be offbeat they just kind of you know dance to the beat of their own drum these are really the people that are not afraid um to stand alone and just kind of be themselves i'm not too sure if john lennon was an aquarius but if he was it definitely would make sense to the type of philosophies that he also believed in as well because i think there's an article that i actually read that um when he was still married um his wife had just come back from a trip and the wife walked in and walked in on him and yoko you know having breakfast and i mean you know as a married woman walking in on your husband and his mistress i would assume i, I think that's the perfect way to describe the situation because he was still married so his mistress walking in on his mistress and him having breakfast at your family dinner table i mean that would be horrendous but this is something that john lennon john lennon did and he felt as though you know um hey well meet my future wife and well our relationship is done it served its purpose and now i'm moving on kind of situation so it's that type of radical shocking energy that uranian types just have and they are so unapologetic about it and it's just really something that is very very inspirational i mean i can even you know talk about it on a personal level it's taken me so much time it's taken me so much time to actually just embrace my differences and to just accept that you know i perceive life in a way that a lot of people may may perceive to be taboo may see um may perceive to be unrealistic i mean i'm from south africa and i talk about astrology and i'm trying to teach people about how how astrology has helped me understand myself better like go figure astrology is not really you know the topic on everybody's tongues it is not something that everybody is talking about so really um you know it takes a lot of courage to chase the impossible if i can put it that way of course to me it it, it seems possible but you know to everyone else it's kind of like do you really think it's going to work but you know i don't really it's not even that i don't care it's just that this is what i'm passionate about and this is what i i want to share my experience and hopefully other people can learn from you know from me and i can learn from them and it's just to me i just perceive life as just a learning experience and we all have faced trials and tribulations in our lives and we can all learn from each other that's just basically how i see life we should be learning from each other we all have different experiences we all come from different walks of life um so therefore we can all learn from each other essentially so um yes like i was saying um they really want people to evolve even they even want that for themselves um they want people to evolve like i said spiritually physically emotionally socially and even in their careers as well even monetarily i think everybody wants to advance and kind of um experience a the sky is the limit when it comes to anything that they want to do i mean imagine the liberation or the freedom of just waking up in the morning and being like okay what's the what's the next best thing that i can do what else can i explore i mean there's so much in the world the world like globally that we can experience and for me that's that's the definition of life really just experiencing life i mean i have a stellium in the ninth house so you know <laughs> experiencing life physically and you know in 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 real time is is how i learn i learn through other people's experiences i learn through my own experiences and i share um, my experiences and my knowledge with other people so you know go figure but um they are also able to carry forth 
the um the burdens of other people and even assist transmuting that energy um for transformation because um uranus is almost like pluto in a way um because pluto is also just disruptive it's destructive um sometimes it it can be sudden although with pluto it's more subtle um i think with pluto you only realize the change after the aftermath so it's not like a building being bulldozed because that you're kind of like expecting you know um pluto is more pluto is more the silent killer and then uranus is more the shock it is more like a jolt to your body where you can experience it immediately and you can see it happening in real time and it's like oh my gosh did that just happen with pluto it's more time has to go by for you to actually see that oh okay this is what actually happened this is what contributed to all of the events so um pluto is disruptive it's it's sudden and in most cases and definitely irreversible change that take that takes place however i think with uranus it's change that is positive if you embrace it everything is about acceptance i believe if you're able to accept certain circumstances within your life then you're able to have a more fulfilling life because you're always open um to anything happening you're always open to changes you're always willing to adapt um you're able to be fluid and flexible and really like i always say the only constant is change so with uranian energy this is where you need to be accepting of change you need to embrace it with all of your heart so that it's not it's not perceived you know as the end of the world but again i digress so they're able to carry forth the burdens of others and like i said even transmute that energy for transformation um because like i said you know uranus in a way is like pluto and i've actually seen how um uranus has made such sudden and irreversible changes and like i said most of the changes are for the best it's not the end of the world i mean if i can even um say something that happened to me personally before i even lost um both of my jobs actually actually i've lost three jobs in <laughs> in the space of 2 years and when i actually analyzed my chart at the time because i was analyzing the transits that were happening and transits are just basically um movements within the planets that will affect your birth chart that will affect you personally on an individual level i mean personally individual same thing but yes you get my point um my uranus no actually uranus was transiting my midheaven and midheaven as we know is the 10th house and the 10th house which i'm going to be discussing in my saturn video is the house of career it's the house of work it's the house of publicity it's the house of prestige and honor and you know it's the house of the father and all of those great things so i already knew when i saw uranus to my midheaven i was like okay i'm about to lose a job or there are going to be really sudden and dramatic changes that are going to that are going to happen to um any of these aspects in my life i'm either going to be really humiliated publicly which i definitely was because even the manner that i was um even the manner in which i lost my job was in a very technological way i had some um movies and some series that were saved onto the computer that i was using at work and i was working as a um junior accounting clerk so before i had taken my maternity leave i didn't delete those videos so apparently you know it it was a huge problem and you know as i always maintain i mean who really goes through contracts i mean if you heard that you just got an amazing job and you know you're going to you're going to be living life the way you had intended nobody's really looking at the fine print right you're not really taking your contract and looking at everything verbatim because even if you do there's nothing that you can do about it there's nothing that you can change on the contract you kind of still have to accept it anyway because a lot of companies don't even like people who push back a lot of the time so anyway I digress again. So um yeah that was apparently a problem to to the company so I went 
um, through a disciplinary hearing. I was suspended from my job for like about a week. And then after that, I already knew that, okay, no, this is not going to work anymore. Um, I'm definitely losing this job. I had already known before they even told me. So this is the amazing thing about astrology is that not that you can predict what's going to happen, but you can become more accepting of whatever happens after that. Like the aftermath is not as, you know, it's not as detrimental to your mental health or your physical health or your spiritual health. It's more of a, okay, you've been warned that something of this nature is going to happen and then you find better ways to deal with it. And that's what I use my transits for. But again, I digress because I will be talking about transits and aspects in future videos. I'm definitely excited about that. But like I said, um, you know, uh, Uranian and Aquarians um, are really the type of people that are forward thinking they are just ingenious and have the ability to see the future in ways that other signs couldn't even begin to understand it's like they are literally limitless in their potential because as soon as soon as they overcome the illusion of burdens then they can really experience life to the fullest it's like when i lost like all three of my jobs essentially i then started thinking about my dreams i then started thinking about things that i really wanted to do i started thinking about the ways that i want to contribute to society the ways that you know society has given back to me was enough motivation for me to actually start my podcast actually because like i said uranus rules technology and well and you know new age media and we are in the age of Aquarius, so voila you know we've already made a, a a we've already made a turning point into understanding the energy of uranus and the impact that it had on my career and the way that i perceived my career the way that i perceived authority and 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 because definitely from two years ago i have gone through tremendous change and you know in hindsight i'm actually very grateful because i'm not able to speak to you guys i'm not able to learn from you guys i'm not able to also um experience or even learn other perspective different perspectives from people around the globe and what's better than that really you know having in-depth conversations of what we think is actually going on in the world so i definitely do appreciate the change that uranus has brought me because like i said uranus rules technology and social media and here i am on youtube making videos about astrology and how it has you know um impacted my life in the most significant ways because you know i was always interested in um zodiac signs but it was more oh i just meet somebody and then i'm like oh what's your star sign and then they'd be like oh i'm a taurus i'd be like oh my gosh we're totally meant for each other we should totally be friends or we should totally get into a relationship and then i realized oh my gosh it's not just about sun signs it actually goes much much deeper so um thank you uranus for that i definitely do appreciate it and i will continue growing and i'll continue evolving and etc etc but yes these are the people that are ingenious and just have the ability to see the future in ways that other signs couldn't even begin to understand or even comprehend they are literally limitless like i said in their potential um and as soon as they overcome the illusion of burdens as soon as they overcome the illusion of thinking inside the box because there really is no box then that's when they can experience their true potential their true individuality their true um authentic uh, authenticity really comes to the forefront as soon as they just let go of the restrictions i mean a lot of aquarians um that are evolved really look at life as everything being a lesson and i also believe that uranian uranian energy makes you realize that ultimately once you have figured out um your purpose and i mean even figuring out your purpose is such a long long journey i mean for some people it takes them you know 27 years for other people it takes them 50 years for other people even more than that so um we all kind of have to be patient towards humanity and especially humanity that is struggling really that is currently still within that box and that hasn't really accepted that there is a life outside of that box or that there wasn't even a box to begin with we really have to be patient with those people because ultimately um 
you know the opening of life being limitless really comes at different ages at different stages um it just depends on where that person is in their life at that time so it's not something that you can really project onto other people um because you know uranian energy does have that potential whereby they feel like they can project that energy onto other people and they need to be careful of this because not everybody is ready okay not everybody is ready for uranian energy so we need to be very very mindful of that uranian types that's something i definitely struggle with because i'm always like but there is no box what are you talking about i don't have to conform to this i don't even have to do this no i absolutely will not listen to what you have to say you know i absolutely will not sign on the dotted line how about i sign on a linear line how about i sign on a curve how about i don't sign at all you know that is the 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 energy of of your uh, of uranus and um you know like i said once we have figured out our purpose and actually once once uranus figures out that its purpose is to actually transform the crosses or the burdens that humanity carries then that's when they can transform it into you know into magic really into into something really really magical um you know if you have this energy you can either accept it for the blessing that it is or you know you can decide to stay within your box and you know color the box whatever color you want and you know live within the limits or the limitations of that box and hide your originality um you know and even your fears because i mean the only reason why anyway you're staying within the box that society has told you to 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 stay in is because of fear honestly we just fear our own power we fear our own ideas we fear our own visions and i think it has a lot to do with the society because a lot of us are not trying to upset the status quo we're really trying to be accepted in society because what happens when you're not accepted in society you become an outcast and who wants to be outcasted from society nobody right nobody wants to you know really nobody wants to live outside of the the boundaries of society and enjoy everything that you know society has to offer but unfortunately for uranian types society is not going to help you with much society is not going to help you determine your career society is not going to help you determine your finances wherever uranus is that is where you need to be authentic that is where you need to be original that is where you need to express your independence like i said because a lot of that energy or a lot of those decisions that you do decide to make in the name of expressing yourself or being your higher self or experiencing or even expressing your higher self is where you are going to benefit others and potentially maybe in this lifetime cause a revolution and that really is what uranus energy is about and as i said uranus in our um in our natal charts deal with where we seek freedom where we seek opportunity where we want to be independent and also where we can experience sudden and unexpected change and even uncomfortable change because let's face it change a lot of the time is not our friend change is not our comfort zone definitely definitely isn't so uranus is that planet that wants you to experience discomfort because it's in discomfort that you seek to change the situation you know it's like sleeping in a wet bed like oh why would you want to sleep in a wet bed i mean you know you would want to wake up from that bed and be like oh let me change the sheets let me get a new mattress for that matter you know because I'm, you know the mattress would be soaking so it really pushes you to get out of the bed in practical terms and make a plan to make it dry again or even to realize that oh i can actually um love my life sleeping in a wet bed but in a way that is different i don't know maybe like designing wet bedding uh, i don't know hypothetical totally hypothetical but um yes so it is realizing that in comfort there is no 
growth it's also where wherever you do have uranus it's also where you can be perceived as just weird or unconventional um where you're just kind of unusual you know you're kind of a non-conformist however in whichever way and whatever that means and of course um, how you are a non-conformist is determined by the sign that Uranus is in and where would be con- would be determined by where Uranus is in your chart. So like me, if you, Uranus is in the ninth house, you don't really want to be told that, you know, when it comes to religion, that God is the only God or that Jesus is the only, you know, um, the only way to experience a higher level of consciousness you want to experience all things and honestly in my opinion i do not believe that our forefathers and our ancestors actually perceived life in one way or looked to one path i do believe a lot of the times that our ancestors did look to the stars especially the cosmos to be guided because at the end of the day um who else was going to guide you along the path of life i mean surely it had to come from somewhere surely we had to be taught all of these teachings by something by deities by god by you know because i mean of course god is there the creator will always be there however the creator is not going to live life for us if that makes sense the creator is definitely going to create Um, situations and circumstances where we have to change where we have to experience um, some sort of evolution whether that be physically spiritually in whichever capacity the point is we will eventually get to a point where we need to experience some sort of change i mean you can't remain an infant forever right you know a seed can't remain a seed forever it needs to sprout it needs to grow it needs to provide shade at some point it needs to provide um, food in in a way that it is a fruit or a vegetable if it is that you know it is a fruit or a vegetable obviously not all seeds are going to be fruits or vegetables just saying because of course we do have the figurative seed you know which is the seed of knowledge and hopefully it um encourages growth so um take that with a grain of salt um uranus also rules technology it rules friends like i mentioned before it rules collaboration it rules groups organizations revolutions inventions um to some extent homosexuality uh it also rules divorce breakups i see a lot of oh my gosh i see a lot of breakups currently happening um a lot of our planets are currently in retrograde i think there's about six planets in retrograde but i think no 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 no. actually i think some planets actually went direct today i'm not too sure which planets don't do not at me do not take my word for it (laughs) i would um have to go and look that up but there are some planets that did go direct today and of course today is the 11th of october so you know go and look that up do not take my word for it definitely do your own research but like i said it rules divorce breakups i mean these are things that are sudden these are not really things that you know everybody is going to be experiencing you know like I mean, wherever Uranus is in your chart, then you'll definitely be tested. But I seem to see a lot of a lot of breakthroughs. And like I said, breakthroughs are uncomfortable. They are not really your friend. They are not situations you really want to find yourself in. Uranus is not about comfortability. Uranus is literally a rebel. Point blank, period um it also um is about the future it's also about moving forward and just reaching new frontiers breaking new grounds breaking new barriers providing information that's different that's um you know that's thought provoking that is what uranus is all about uranus also just shatters our old ways and views of perception it creates a new or rather breaks through the barriers that prevent the free flow of our life source and our life source technically is to evolve is to change when you put a seed into the ground into the soil and you water it of course it needs to grow and it needs to become something so out of a seed something needs to come from that 
and that is the the um the natural flow of life and like i said just like pluto uranus is an instrument for transformation um uranus just in its nature is very unpredictable and therefore the changes that it brings are like i said unpredictable and sudden as well um just a side note in um greek mythology uranus is the creator or the god of the sky um who manifests his greater good um in spite of chaos so already like i said if you're used to a particular way of life uranus will just come and shut it all down and force you to just move or force you to see things in a different perspective which ultimately is for your greater good which ultimately is the best change for who you are meant to be in this lifetime because i mean imagine if we didn't experience uranus we literally would not even be talking through social media i don't even know like i can't even imagine how life would have been without this amazing planet um although like i said the change may come in a way that is very questionable it's very disruptive and uncomfortable it's changed nonetheless and um it needs to be lived through and also uranus energy is extremely compassionate as well because it's not a selfish energy like this change that is happening is not like a oh my gosh this is only happening to me i mean we're literally living in the age of aquarius so all of the change that is currently happening in the universe right now in the world right now is affecting all of us okay all of us are experiencing this change all of us are seeing things um just literally fall apart all of us are seeing things for what they really are all of us are looking for ways to think of um better ways to better ways for our finances better ways to experience spirituality better ways to um you know look deeper within ourselves a lot of us are finding ways to become more authentic a lot of ways are coming up with um a lot of us are coming up with new ways to do things um then we would have been if we were in you know our comfortable states a lot of us are losing are losing our jobs so now we need to think out of the box and start creating ways to make income right i'm pretty sure a lot of us are going through that so um the age of aquarius is definitely exciting times to be in it's an exciting time to be alive my friends although i know not a lot of us actually feel that way however i digress again um so like i said very disruptive very uncomfortable um very questionable because while you're going through these changes you kind of think to yourself okay where is this all leading what is it that i'm supposed to be taking from this where is this all going and honestly with uranus it's so unpredictable you really don't know you just kind of have to take it with a grain of salt and just keep it moving just keep it pushing and you'll definitely be better on the other side that is for sure and honestly it's when we experience these sudden and unexpected changes that we are pressured or that we realize a change needs to be made whatever that means for you it's definitely going to be subjective but i think the greatest teaching that uranus has for us is to live in such a way that we are not attached to things that we experience or that we develop a way to not become attached to people to places to things to memories um you know anything that if it's taken away would sink us to you know an ocean of depression that is really what uranus energy is about it's being able to accept things as they happen and not hold on to the past essentially and not be nostalgic of course we can go back in hindsight and be like but why but then we also need to come back to reality and be like i see and learn from it and keep it moving and you know hopefully have the strength to deal with those changes that do come along um essentially to loosen the chains of att- attachment and to live our lives in a way that is fearless and to embrace change no matter what kind of change it is that we would experience so in my next video i will be discussing pluto the god of the underworld i'm definitely excited for that one as well um there's so much to say about pluto pluto is so so deep and so so intense um it's definitely a lovely planet um depending which way you perceive it obviously and depending which way it is aspected in your chart 
it is definitely the planet we all love to hate and hate to love but um (laughs) i'll definitely be discussing that and how it correlates to our birth chart on that note thank you so much for tuning in let me know your thoughts in the comments down below show me some love and subscribe to my channel um again your time spent is much appreciated till next time you know what you do so keep doing what you do peace love and most of all light i'm out